What is happening everyone? Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Setup Wars episode 334 is here to make your Mondays just a little bit better. So sit back, relax, grab your coffee, and let's get into it. So you just finished building a PC and you're greeted with this horrendous message on your screen. Well, fear not because I have an easy solution for you guys. Head on over to yourcdkey.com and pick up a Windows 11 or Windows 10 Pro CD key for around 15 bucks. Just put in the code TS20 to get that extra 20% off and afterwards they will email you the CD key and all you have to do is go into your activation settings on Windows and put it in. Afterwards, the watermark will disappear and you can enjoy all the features from Windows. Kicking off the episode is Erdem and his heavily inspired setup. Can you guess whose setup this looks like the most? Most of us are thinking it, come on. The one and only Zvezdan who took home the 31st seal of approval from episode 267 nearly two years ago. The shape of the desk, the location of the Gobi light bars, hell, even the color scheme is identical. But what if I told you that this setup doesn't even have a desktop PC? In fact, it's powered by a laptop that he kept underneath the desk. So Erdem is actually a Twitch employee from London that built the setup in a span of three weeks for gaming and recording content. The desk is from Homecom and it actually rotates 360 degrees, giving you the flexibility on how you want to put this against the wall. So you can have this on the right corner or the left corner of your room. It's got the same design as the MoMA desk, but it's a little smaller and narrower. Personally, I would have spaced the desk a bit more from the wall, giving him more distance from the monitors because this looks a little too cramped for my taste. Could you imagine how much closer he would have been if he didn't mount the monitors? He said the setup is used for gaming, but the peripheral selection says otherwise. How on earth are you able to play Halo or Apex Legends on that keyboard and arc mouse, my guy? You must be very skilled. For audio, he's rocking some speakers, we got a SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pros for gaming, and a dedicated mic from Audio-Technica. I can't tell if I'm more disappointed or impressed that he was able to cover every square inch of that desk. I mean, there's barely any room to breathe on there. But on the upside, everything is organized. Even the cable management is on point. He added grommets in the back to help pass through the cables for most of the gear, and it all leads into a few cable boxes tucked underneath the desk. Using tons of raceways to channel the wires into multiple cable boxes underneath the desk, and he even drilled holes to add grommets for the gear on the surface. Job well done. Really the only thing I would probably change is the location of the wall art because a part of it is being blocked off by the monitor. And of course adding more space against the wall, but all in all it's a nice little stepsister version of the masterpiece that we all know and love. Thank you Artem for sharing this with us. Speaking of stepsisters, take a look at this awesome couples battle station from Portugal. We got the his setup on the right and the hers on the left. What was the first thing that caught your attention? Because for me, it was the wall. I'm absolutely obsessed with stone walls and this one hands down steals the show. It's not often you see a custom wall designed with a stone finish. In fact, everything in the back of the stone wall was designed specifically for the setup itself. We got the brackets holding up the countertops, tons of raceways for the cable management, and wall outlets for the power. There's also a slit near the back of the tabletop, which is used to route all the cables through and into the custom cable rack underneath the desk. All beautifully done. But if I can be brutally, brutally? But if I can be brutally honest here, doesn't it feel like something is missing? I feel like there is too much empty wall space. But then again, I would hate to ruin the stone wall by hanging stuff on there. You fill in the empty space to personalize the setup or maybe even make it cozy, but you ruin the stone wall in the process, or you leave it as is for that minimalism. What would you guys do in this case? I'm curious. You already know, if this was my setup, I'll be slapping two pieces on the wall with some RGB lines, maybe some greenery, and the TS logo smack down in the center. Any hoosies, the purpose of the setup, at least for Jose's side, is for light gaming, listening to music, and working from home. Both setups are built on this massive, custom-built countertop from a local carpenter, 
and it's being held up by a few metal brackets behind the wall, like we saw earlier, and then we got a few custom drawers on the sides which hold the PCs. Jose has a blacked out water cool system featuring the Ryzen 9 3950X paired with an RX 5700 XT, while she is rocking a Ryzen 7 3700X and an RX 570, both very modest PCs for light gaming. I also love how each of them have different set of gear to match their personalities. She's rocking a Womir K66 paired with a pink mouse and a nature mouse pad, while Jose has a custom Tofu 65 paired with an MX Master and a DaVinci style mouse pad. What's interesting here is that both setups have speakers. I would have to assume they don't use them at the same time and either alternate with their headphones or they get used while the other person is not at their setup because that can get quite loud sometimes. Regardless, this was a very fascinating couple setup and definitely the first of its kind to feature a custom stone wall. Thank you, Jose, for coming on and sharing this with us. At the number third spot is an RGB lover's wet dream. Lucas, or Lido as he likes to be called, is a social worker from Germany who likes to game and create content on his spare time. So he built himself a battle station after he moved into his new apartment. Apologies in advance if the colors are blinding you. Unfortunately, I didn't get any pictures of the setup during daylight, so you're just gonna have to bear with me on this. So the setup is built on a custom made oak wood desk with an RGB strip on the edge for a bit of lighting. And then for displays, he's rocking triple monitors in a TIE fighter layout. This is also the first time I'm seeing those LG dual up monitors on the show. They have a very unusual 16 by 18 aspect ratio, which almost looks like squares, but they are mostly used for productivity, while he games on the G7 in the middle. Being a content creator certainly has its perks, like getting free samples in exchange for content, and Lido has no shortage of them, like this pegboard packed with a bunch of keyboards. However, the daily driver is the Ducky Mia Moonlight that he paired with the ROG Gladius 2. Aside from the two-full speaker, he does own a pair of DT900 Pro Xs that he keeps off to the side next to his blacked out PS5. But for streaming, it looks like he's got the usual starter kit, including the Elgato Stream Deck and a quadcast microphone hooked up to the Wave XLR interface. For those wondering how people add those really cool hexagon RGB panels on the wall, here's a behind the scenes look. So you start off by arranging the panels in any order you like, preferably by mixing a few different colors and sizes to give it a three dimensional look. And then you glue them together using super glue or any strong adhesive so that you can flip it upside down and create a wood silhouette that basically attaches to the back, making sure none of the hexagons move around. And finally, to add spacing against the wall, you just add a few one inch thick pieces of wood, giving you enough space to run an LED strip behind. I don't care who you are or what type of setup you have, these will always look cool on the wall. I also really, really like the way he personalized this setup. It's maybe a bit too heavy on the RGB, but everything else is tastefully done. Thank you, Lido, for sharing this with us. Speaking of tastefully done, coming in at number four slot is every teenager's dream streaming setup. Isaiah, who goes by the online name of Mr. Candy, is a streamer and content creator from Washington State who built this setup for the very purpose in just one year from saving his monies. We got the usual suspects making up the desk and the wall art of panels that we see almost everywhere now, but at least Isaiah fully committed and covered both walls with them. Although, I don't know how I feel about the crotch pole in the center. That can be really annoying sometimes. You should have put that more towards the back, but honestly, you didn't even need one in the first place considering you mounted the monitors on the wall anyways. You have no direct weight in the center of the table. I can almost guarantee that Isaiah won't be having any neck problems in the near future because of the height of those monitors. It looks like he games on the middle 240Hz display while the outer two are for multitasking and then there's a TV up top as an overhead. I love how neat and tidy he kept the surface. Now even though I applaud the fact that he made a hole in the desk to pass through the keyboard cable, I would have made that hole slightly above the mouse pad. You never want to cut through the mouse pad. The setup doesn't use any speakers for obvious reasons, but he does own a pair of cloud alphas. I do want to point out the location of the webcam and the mic arm real quick because it makes me happy to see that you attach them to the monitor mount. But why didn't you do the same thing for the key lights? It would have looked so much cleaner if the neck piece wasn't visible from the bottom. Also, you didn't really need to buy the full size key lights. You could have saved money and gone with the key light airs instead, which also wouldn't look as 
freakishly large on your setup. Speaking of saving money, I'm confused with your budgeting priorities because your PC specs are screaming in agony trying to push the 240 hertz monitor along with your other three displays. We have an i5 paired with the GTX 1650 Super with 32 gigs of RAM. I have so many questions. Like, first of all, why did you even buy an iBuy Power PC in the first place? These guys have one of the worst overpriced pre-builds known to man, right next to iBuy Power. But what makes things worse is that you upgraded the memory and the power supply first before anything else. You know, you spent a lot of money on the monitors, the streaming gear, and the wall panels. I would have hoped you would first start off with upgrading your PC components, mainly the CPU, GPU, and the power supply, before throwing all this money on the streaming setup. I'm no professional streamer by any means, but I would think that the quality of your streams should be the priority over the setup's aesthetics. A faster PC would mean that you can stream at a higher bitrate, better quality, and a higher resolution. I feel like your streamers would appreciate it more, right? There's obviously still a lot of work that needs to be done here, but I can safely say that you have built a solid foundation to work off of, and honestly, upgrading the PC parts seems like a trivial thing anyways. I wish you tons of success on your streaming career, Isaiah, and I thank you for coming on the show. You know, I haven't featured a laptop setup in a while. So ladies and gents, we are ending the episode with a badass laptop setup that's on steroids. I think what makes this submission so impressive is the fact that this entire setup is powered by a budget Acer laptop. That poor little device is being used and abused. This is certainly one way to make the most out of your situation though. So apparently Tyler listed his occupation as a Twitch streamer from Australia, but we all know he's primarily a student given that he's only 15 years old. He's technically rocking quad displays when you factor in the laptop, but the main monitor is the top 75 hertz while the outer two are for multitasking. We got excellent use of space with that monitor layout and the speaker placement, although I would recommend picking up some cheap stands to get those speakers at ear level or the cheaper route would be to pick up some isolation pads so you can tilt them higher. My dude even hooked up the massive receiver right underneath the desk for easy access. That's gotta be big brain. At least you know he didn't cheap out on the audio gear. He's also got a pair of cans on the left that he switches to for gaming. Cable management is taken care of with a few signums and zip ties and the overall vibes of the room are lit. I mean, how can it not be with that impressive Hot Wheels collection? I would eventually show off the rest of them that you tucked away in the cabinet because it kind of feels like a waste to keep them stored like that. Really, the only thing I have an issue with is the limited amount of mouse space, but other than that, everything else can easily be adjusted. Thank you, Tyler, for showing us that we don't need a high-end PC to have a badass gaming setup. And that wraps up today's episode of Setup Wars, ladies and gents. Leave your beautiful comments below letting me know which of these setups made you moist the most. Say that three times in a row. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing because I do host Setup Wars every other Monday. I'll leave you beautiful elbows and I'll see you very soon. In the next one. Most moist, most moist, most moist. Say that three times.